Hello art friends. I had a student request that I do a watercolor video. So I'm going to attempt it. Um, watercolor is, I'm not the greatest at it. Um, that's something I wish I took more of at um, college when I was going for my art degree. But you know, let's give it a go. Um, I'm gonna do a blue bird because I have a lot flying around um, in the front of my house. So I went on the internet and I found a picture of a blue bird that I'm going to use as um, reference, as a guide. So I'm gonna start sketching lightly the top of his head. <clears throat> he has some feathers coming down over here. His little beak. And he is kind of a chunky bird. So we have his body and the rest of his feathers. <clears throat> and he's perched up on a branch. <clears throat> Excuse me. And there's a line here near his beak and his eye. And then these feathers are blue, and then his body is half tan, half white. <clears throat> Excuse me, goodness. I'm using two types of brushes today, a medium one and a really thin one. And my watercolors are Crayola. And I also have this plastic paint tray. Um, to mix the colors. You can use a paper plate or the lid from a um, Tupperware container, anything plastic that'll let you mix paint. So what I first like to do is get some yellow and I like to outline the body in yellow very lightly, just enough to cover the pencil marks that I did. And the trick with watercolor is to keep adding water. And you don't have to be very precise with watercolor. Watercolor is supposed to be very um, free flowing and fluid. It doesn't have to be precise or exact. And what I like to do with watercolor is step back from the picture and kind of squint my eyes and let the colors kind of blend together to form the picture. So now I'm going to put some yellow on my plastic tray and I dip my brush in water and then in the paint and then I kind of spin the brush and let the paint get on the tray. And then I'm also going to get some orange and mix that in there. Let me add some drops of water. I think I'm going to get more yellow. Mix that all together. I'm trying to make a yellow orange. That's a little bit better. Let me do a little bit more. I'm gonna go in here. I'm just gonna put in some color because according to my picture, the top half of his body is tan. And when I'm painting, I'm always looking back to my picture as a guide. So that's just about where the tan parts are. I'm gonna go back in and get some orange. And under here, from the picture, it's more orange than the rest of his body. So I'm just 
I'm being really free flowing with my paintbrush. I'm not trying to be exact. I'm just playing with the watercolor. And down here, it looks like he has more orange too. Again, I'm looking at the picture that I pulled up on the computer as a reference. Now down here, it's mostly white with a little bit of grayish. So what I think I'm gonna do is get some blue on my tray, wash off my brush. I'm patting it on a paper towel. And then I'm gonna add in some water. I think I might add in some purple. Maybe a little bit more purple. Really put water on your brush. Um, and then he has some gray areas right here. So I'm just using that blue and purple mixture and a lot of water just to give it a little bit of like a grayish dull color just so that we see it so slightly. Actually going to try to cover up this yellow. Let me make some more blue and purple. Ooh, that's really dark, so I gotta add a lot of water and get my bigger brush. All right, that's turning a little bit more purple than I intended to. That's okay, we're gonna leave this part alone for now and let it dry. Let's try to do the blue part of his body. So I'm gonna go over here and add my blue. And I'm doing like these little fine brush strokes. So it looks like it's imitating the texture of his feathers. And I'm looking at the picture on my computer and the bluish color goes all the way down. But there's also some darker spots that we're gonna tackle in a second. The thing with watercolor is you gotta let it dry and take a break and then go back in and add more layers. And that way it gets different dimensions and different colors stand out on top of each other. You can't just finish it all in one sitting, if that makes sense. So it definitely takes a lot of patience. I'm gonna get some purple in here. Maybe some more blue, mix, mix. Uh, purple. So in my picture, he has darker feathers here. And under 
under here, there's also some darker areas. Um, and here. And I'm going to go ahead and use this color for his eye, but I'm going to keep one spot white because he does have a white highlight in his eye. And his beak is darker. And he also has a small orange spot in the middle of his beak. So I need to go back and add that orange spot. I'm gonna mix some purple and orange and add in some dark areas. Kind of makes like a brownish blackish color. I'm going in and adding that color into the white areas that I created. So see, I'm kind of, I'm not sticking to one whole area for the, um, for it to be completed. I'm bouncing back and forth between areas, so each section has a time, a little bit of time to dry. So then I can go back in and add more colors. I'm also going to add this color to his belly. Let's see if we can get rid of that purple that we made. It's a little bit better. It's a chunky bird. All right, the rest I'm gonna do in a time lapse video, so it can go a little faster. But yeah. With watercolor, just play around and I'll try to attach some different watercolor color video links. Thanks guys.